everyone, it's Charlton. So I really want I want to give you an update on this uh, Thai boys soccer team that's stuck in a, in a cave in Thailand, along with their um, their their coach. It's twelve boys, ages eleven to sixteen. They they reached them yesterday. I mean, everybody knows this. I'll show you a little video of that. You've probably already seen it by now. Them inside the cage, the diver who seems to have like a British accent, I believe, speaking with them. I'll just show a quick portion of it because there's a lot to cover here. And I was shocked to read at what they're possibly facing, you know, what their choices are. Um, and in the coming days, the forecast is for rain. So if they're not able to get out of there in the, in the next couple days, they could be stuck in there for four months. I mean, it's, I just can't believe it. In fact, some of the doctors have volunteered and, you know, um, told the children they'll, they'll stay with them, you know, for inside there for four months until, until I guess the seasons change and the waters would recede and then they'd be able to basically float out of there. Right now, they're still trying to pump water out of there so that they could float out in life jackets. But as it stands right now, there's still many passageways. I'll show you a diagram, which is, I mean, I think they're three miles into the cave where they, where the children would have to, I think on their own, Go underwater and you know and navigate passages that will only allow one person to 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 pass by to get through with diving equipment you know up and down very very hairy and I don't know I don't know I mean I, I read in this article I'll go quickly I'm just giving you my summary right now let me play the video first before I run on and on just a little portion of it. How many of you? Thirteen. Brilliant. There, uh, there they are, and um, as I was saying, uh, in this article, it says none of the children can swim, let alone dive. And diving's not just, you know, you don't just throw on equipment and, and do it. I think it requires a fair amount of training that even an adult, you know, has to go through several certifications. Obviously, in this situation, you're just going to be taught as quickly as possible, but I don't know... I don't know. It's it's definitely uh, hairy. So it says two doctors have volunteered to stay with the children in the um, the Thai cave for up to four months. And floodwaters cut them off and make rescue attempts impossible. A football coach and twelve rake thin. They're very emaciated. Um, you know they've been in there for ten days. They haven't eaten. I assume they're drinking the water that's right there. They must be which is probably not safe. I think there's some that are in red condition, some that are in yellow condition, some that are in green condition. And obviously and red is the worst, but I think, you know, they're all fairly okay, but they need to get out of there. And at least at least people have access to them now and doctors will be getting, able to get in and back, back and forth and so forth. All right. So the fears are fresh rainfall over the next few days could add to the flooding in the cave, meaning the, the boys who cannot swim may have to wait until the end of moon sun moon monsoon geez season in october uh before they can be brought to safety unreal uh, if that does not happen two of thailand's navy doctors have already volunteered to stay in the underground chamber for as long as it takes uh, british volunteer diver john Vala volanthin and rick stanton were among those who struggled through narrow passages and murky waters to search for the boys who were found starving but unhurt on an elevated rock on Monday. I wonder if those those are the two divers that are in the video. SEAL commander uh, said a team of seven, including medics, were, are with the boys and looking after them um, after an underground headquarters was set up, stocked with diving equipment, food, and medical supplies. So there is uh, some, a number of pictures that are really pretty unbelievable that show you in the in the cavern in the cave trying to pump out the, the water as well as this this shows you and this is not mentioned in the thing but um 
there's because there's something on this diagram where it says potential digging area. I, I didn't see the you know that as an option you know discussed. It's actually better the other way. So they are, I believe, three miles, 3.8 miles into, this is where they are. You know, this was the entrance here, you know, so all this way. And, and, and you have multiple places where they have to go down and up, down and up, a long thing here. And I think one or two of these are places where only one person can get through. So they will have to go by themselves. It's really scary, man. I, I, it's just terrifying. Teams have been pumping 10,000 liters of water out of the caves every hour, but this is only enough to lower the level by one centimeter, or, and uh, more rain is, is forecast. Yikes. One of the rescue options being considered is to teach the youngsters how to dive, but experts have questions whether they will have the strength or ability to pick up the skills required in time. As for rain in the forecast in the next few days, the evacuation must speed up. Diving gear will be used. If the water rises, the task will be difficult. We must bring these kids out before then. Diving is not easy. Those who have never done it will find it difficult because there are narrow passages in the cave. They must be able to use diving gear. If the gear is lost at any moment, it can be dangerous to life. We found that most of the boys are in green condition. Maybe some of the boys have injuries or light injuries and would be categorized as yellow condition. But no one, I'm sorry, no one is, no one is in red condition, which is, is obviously good. Rescuers have asked for donations of 15 small full-faced masks. Now they're going to get about 10,000 of those probably. But um, experts have explained that these are easier for, for beginners because they fully fit around a diver's face with, uh, with mouthpieces uh, while mouthpieces can be knocked out, I see. Okay, so there's a specialized mask that they're seat circling, not just ones that do this, but one that goes over the full face, so they don't have to worry about, you know, uh, something in their mouth, and they can focus on, concentrate on navigating the, uh, you know, the way through it. Ben Raymanentz, a Belgian di cave diver who is part of the international team. Uh, on NBC News today that told, said that he was very surprised, obviously, that they are all alive and actually mentally also healthy. He added they are actually quite responsive, but they are very weak and very skinny. Raymond Ant said of those trapped in the cave and the rescue mission, they can't swim, so they definitely can't dive. The easiest option would be that they uh, keep pumping out water out of the cave. If they need another three or four feet, they need another three or four feet so they can literally float float them out with life jackets but time is not on their side they're expecting heavy thunderstorms and, and thund thunderstorms and rain which might be uh might, might flood the entire cave system making rescue impossible so if that does happen the boys and the coach could be expected to be in the caves for up to three to four months two navy doctors have volunteered to to be locked up inside the cave a huge sacrifice obviously so i wonder where i mean i saw that the teams have been the teams have been pumping 10,000 liters of water out of the caves every hour. But, the, okay, so 10,000, so every hour they're able to reduce it by one centimeter. Yikes. And they need to go three to four feet. I, I'm not, I can't even do the math. So, ten, you know, 10,000 liters out of the cave every hour, but this is only enough to lower the level by one centimeter every hour. And they need to go to three, three to four feet down, you know, before the rain comes. Wow. Okay. So I think that's uh, the story there. That's the update, man. There's, uh, there's the boys right there. And uh, that's the story there, man. I think there's one, actually, there was one other thing I wanted to show you. It's down here. And I even forgot what it was, but I know it's right in between the two pictures. Here's pictures of the mothers who are, you know, still now they're, now they're, One other, I can't even remember what it said. I know there was some. All right, it said the passageway the divers were making their, their way through goes upwards in some places and downwards in, in others and is extremely narrow, making it difficult for divers to fit through with all their gear. They were repeatedly blocked by rising waters that f has filled sections of the cave and forced them to withdraw for safety reasons. When water levels dropped on Sunday, the divers went forward with more met methodical approach. I don't think that was it. Look, there, look at that. It's pictures. There was something in here that I saw that was really, I know I wanted to come to it. Rescue divers spent much of the, 
yesterday making preparations for what ended up being a final push in their search in the cave in northern Thailand. He added they have been uh, at the spearhead of making their way through because they have the skills. Nope. All right, I, 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 that's it. I think I'm going to end this video. I am. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I think that's a diver. And I'll see you in uh, the next video. Later, man.